All right, now it's time for Heroes Q&A number 39. All right, things since the last Q&A video that I made like a month ago. Uh, maybe show clip of Legion anime opening. Oh, maybe I'll add that to the end of this. You see, I made, I sometimes make videos and then I never upload them to YouTube uh, for one reason or another. Very rarely though. And I put those over on Patreon. One of them was a Legion anime opening, which actually just kind of looked like an AMV. And I didn't think it was very good. But I had a lot of fun making it. I'll maybe play that at the end of this. Uh, over here it says Patreon changes. Oh, yeah, I'm making some minor changes to my Patreon. I'm basically just removing a lot of the fluff. I have, like, the rewards are, like, really cluttered with a whole bunch of just meaningless shit. So I'm just, like, removing all that, and then I'm going to add a couple of things. One of them is, like, a monthly thing where I post screenshots of creepy or weird uh, comments or PMs I get. Because as someone on the internet with a somewhat uh, big following, I get a lot of really weird comments and private messages. Uh, so I thought it would be fun to, like, post you know, a Imgur album of just a couple of them once a month. Because there's this uh, cosplayer that I follow on Patreon, and she does that, and she just posts, like, creepy things people send her, and I thought, oh, that's funny. Hey, I get weird messages, too. That would be, you know, really easy Patreon reward. And then I was going to remove my meme reward and just replace it with something else that's actually kind of normal. Uh, I want there to be, like, one big reward there that no one would ever actually buy. But I also want it to be worth something in case someone does. Uh, so I'm going to add, like, a $50 tier reward. And with that one, it's, you know, once a month, you get to just pick an idea and I'll make it guaranteed. And I thought, that's that's not half bad. I get people suggesting ideas all the time and I can't possibly make them uh, because I make my own ideas. Uh, I also have... A new series idea, series of videos. I think I talked about it last time. No, I talked about it in my Patreon podcast, because I also have this other reward on Patreon where once a month I just talk about past videos and what I plan to do for the upcoming month is basically what I used to do in Q&As, but I removed it and just moved it over to the Patreon-only podcast. And in that, I talked about how I was going to start up this new series of videos, and I made a couple of them, and one of them I didn't like enough to actually release. It was a discussion video on why people are proud about not doing pet battles. And I just didn't like how the video came out, so I abandoned it, and I just put some B-roll footage of me doing pet battles, and I uploaded it to you Patreon instead. <laughs> uh, and then another one I made was how I make YouTube videos. And I basically just talked about the process I do for uh, when I make YouTube videos and advice for newer creators. And that video didn't do well at all. Uh, so that experiment is done. <laughs> it's just over. I made two videos. One of them I didn't like enough to actually upload. And the other one just did terribly. Um, so I'm just not going to do that. And instead, I had like this new idea where I was going to make Warcraft mini fact videos, but actually make short videos. Because it just kind of warped into, if I made a random topic about WoW that wasn't a top 10, you know, or a history of a certain ability, I would just call it a Warcraft mini facts. So they're basically just normal, like, essay style videos where I go over a topic. Uh, and I thought, you know, why don't I just make short videos? Like, how I intended it to be in the first place. Because there are a couple of Warcraft mini facts that are less than five minutes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, for YouTube, you want a video to be over 10 minutes. Uh, because a video over 10 minutes will make like two to three times more ad revenue than a video under 10 minutes. And the closer you get, you know, less than 10 minutes, you know, like under five minutes, under two minutes, under one minute, the less watch time a video have, just like the less you make from it. 
So it's just not like a viable thing. And that's why I never really stressed it. You know, Warcraft Minifax videos, we're averaging 10 to 20 minutes, <laughs> which are just normal videos. There's nothing mini about that. And I thought, you know, I could probably do one of those in addition to my normal stuff. You know, just instead of uploading two videos a week, uh, a news video and then just a fully edited video at the end of the week. Why don't I do a news video, a tiny Warcraft minifacts video, and then a normal video at the end of the week? You know, just adding it as a third video for the week. Uh, it has to be short, though, and I think I can probably do that. Like, they're fully edited, you know, just like a normal video. It's just they're less than five minutes, which actually doesn't take that long. It's just like the really long ones that are uh, really hard to make, just because... Editing, what is it? I'm trying to think. Per one minute of video, it's like an hour of editing, uh, like at max. So like a normal video that's over 10 minutes long, that's over 10 hours of editing, max. So for a shorter video under five minutes, it's like five hours of editing. Or, you know, if I'm really fast, since I know how to take a lot of shortcuts... I could probably cut that time in half and only spend like two and a half hours editing a less than five minute video, which is entirely feasible. Of course, that doesn't count the amount of time it takes to actually write the script and then gather footage as well. That's just pure editing. So I guess it would still go up to about five hours. But even then, it'd still probably be a little bit longer than that, too. I'm going to have to do it for a few weeks to see if I can even fit that into the schedule. So I'm going to try doing that. Uh, actual short Warcraft mini facts videos, like in addition to my normal stuff, and short top tens. Uh, that's something I've never really thought about doing, uh, but there are some top ten videos that necessarily don't need to be over ten minutes long, and you know, you don't actually have to say much about them. Um, actually, let me look at my top ten list real quick to see if I can find a good example of a short top 10 that, you know, would fit under five minutes. Let's see, I have one right here. Top 10 weirdest achievement names. A video like that necessarily can't be very long without padding it out, because you'd be like, you know, number 10, the name of this ability is School of Hard Knocks. That's a reference to, like, this movie. Okay, next one. Really short things where you only talk about it for like a sentence or two after you talk, uh, give the topic of that number. Uh, so short, less than five minute top tens will also be something I'll try out. In addition to just short Warcraft mini facts things. And the one I was working on today was like the history of alchemy labs in, in WoW. Uh, cause what I did to get a lot of the ideas, what I just went through past scripts or things that I've had written down because I have a lot of ideas. And one of them was like in one of my, you know, top 50 or 100 facts about WoW video. And one of the items was like, in order to make flasks, you had to be next to an alchemy lab in order to create it. And like, that was it. That was all I said for the topic. And then I moved on to the next point. You know, it's like, you know, I can expand upon that one thing for at least five minutes, because there's a lot more to talk about with that alchemy lab. Because uh, alchemy labs were removed, like, early uh, Wrath of the Lich King, and there were only two alchemy labs in the game before that point. No. There's actually three of them. There's only two alchemy labs in Vanilla WoW, and only one of them for a really long time, and it was in the middle of Skolomance. Skolomance. I'm going to have to learn how to say that correctly, because the video has a show up a lot, and it wasn't easy to get to. It was very inconvenient to get to that alchemy lab. And then they added a second one, which was inside a raid. And it was located right after the third boss in Blackwing Lair, right behind the suppression room, which is infamous for being like one of the worst rooms ever because of just how long it takes to go through it. It is a terrible room, and they have never actually replicated the mechanic of the suppression room again, just because everyone hated it. 
Uh, also, for those of you who don't know, fun fact, infamous means famous for being bad. Uh, I always used to use infamous interchangeably with famous, but it actually has a very specific meaning. And I'm just saying that because, you know, for the longest time, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, uh, Blackwing Lair, the suppression room, was infamous for being terrible. And it was located right behind that. And it was also the raid with the hardest first and second boss ever. There has never been a raid that has had a harder first or second boss. You know, for a raid that has about ten bosses in it, a normal size raid than Blackwing Lair. So getting to that alchemy lab was a huge pain in the ass. And you see how I was able to expand upon the alchemy lab thing, even though I just talked about it for one little fact. That's why I kind of created the Warcraft mini facts thing in the first place, was to talk about little facts like that that can't really fit into another longer video. Uh, I was also going to continue the pet series, like the most overpowered pets in history. Because I should have an editor that should be helping me out, and uh, those videos are very easy to edit and research. And the only reason I don't really do them is because just because it's easy to edit doesn't mean it's not still time-consuming. Uh, it's incredibly time-consuming to make those videos, <laughs> but it is technically easy. It's just, ugh. Like I said, you know, an hour or two per one minute of video footage. No. Yeah, if the video is one minute long, it probably took an hour to make that one minute. For the type of stuff I do, anyway. And a final thing to talk about before I get into the questions. Uh, Total Biscuit died recently. Very recently. Why does it say disk space remaining two hours and 59 minutes? Like, I have Audacity recording right now. And before, it was saying I only had enough space in that file for uh, one hour of recording. And then, all of a sudden, it changed to, like, 59 minutes. And then when it went to 58 minutes, it now says two hours and 58 minutes. Huh. Whatever, I really need to clean up that, that disc. I have tons of just memory. I can just move some stuff around, I'll be fine. Anyways, TB died recently. And there was a lot of people, like World of Warcraft YouTubers and streamers who were posting about it on Twitter and whatever their social medias were, about how like all of them were saying uh, Total Biscuit was their inspiration for making videos and things. And I was like, them too? <laughs> uh, because that was basically, he was a huge reason why I started making videos too, and I didn't really realize that until... He died. Like, I had just been copying him unconsciously. Like, uh, just straight up copied the way he made certain videos. Like, his daily content patch or whatever. Uh, the way he did the videos is exactly how I do my news video. Uh, I just had used, like, a different skin. Where he'd have the little border. Actually, I'll try to do a little bit of editing for this video. I try not to edit too much in my Q&A videos. Because they're supposed to be just basically me talking. It's more of a podcast than a video. But I'll try to show it. I'll show TB's video, his content patch, and then my WoW News video. And you can see the similarities. I just straight up copied him. And I think I might have done that. Actually, I started doing that with my history videos. I'll try to show that as well. Uh, I really like that style the way he was doing it and i stole it <laughs> and i'm pretty sure i stole a couple of other things too or i should say i was inspired by the way he did things and i kind of just incorporated them into the way i do things because you know if it works why not use it yourself and then eventually you'll just find your own groove uh, i think that's like a really good advice for people who are starting out if you like someone, just kind of copy how they do things, but and slowly over time you'll develop your own little habits. And also with TB, like I've known he has he's had cancer for a while, uh, and then he started getting like really bad once uh, it wasn't going well for him. Because you see, the thing is, 
with cancer, it doesn't really act like a virus or like a cold how people are used to. When you start feeling better from a cold, you know, your voice all of a sudden starts feeling better. You can visibly see changes in someone who's getting over an illness like that. But with cancer, someone can seem completely fine one day. And actually, you know, they'd probably even say, oh, I'm feeling great. And then die like a week later. Because cancer doesn't work like a conventional sickness. And when TB started getting really bad, I stopped watching his videos. Because, like, his voice started going away. Because, like, the chemo wasn't going well. And I followed his Twitter, and I eventually unfollowed it. Uh, because the news was bad. I was just kind of, you know, my mind was, he's going to die soon. Like, there's no, he's not beating this. Like, it's game over for him. So I'm going to preemptively prepare myself for it. Because I don't want to get caught off guard again. Like I was with, uh... Haven games. Like, just one day, he went quiet on the internet, and then he died, and I was like, oh, I'm so hurt, especially since three months before that, a really good friend of mine from my old job, he got cancer and then went through a whole bunch of treatments, and eventually he died too. So, I knew uh, two people who died of cancer really close to each other. And both times, it was a huge surprise to me, and I it hit me really hard. So, for TB, I didn't want that to happen to me, so I stopped watching all of his stuff, like, about a year to six months ago. And I'd still get updates about him, though, because a lot of the people I follow on Twitter also follow him, and whenever he posts some kind of update... They'd like his tweet, so if you like someone's tweet, it shows up in your timeline. Uh, So if you have a Twitter account and you like to like pictures of hentai and stuff, don't do that. (laughs) Because everyone else can see it. Uh, And so they would always like his updates, so I still got updates even though I had unfollowed him from Twitter. And I knew things were getting bad. uh, Like to the point where he said he was going into surgery for you know, relief. I was like, well, this is it. It's game over. And then I noticed I hadn't gotten any updates from him in a while from other people on my Twitter feed. Uh, So I went to check his Twitter and I noticed that his last post was like three days ago after saying he had gotten back from surgery and was feeling better. And I was like, this is a major death flag. Like if I was watching an anime, I was like, yep, this person's dead. Uh, So I kept checking back his Twitter for that day you know it's like i'm basically just expecting the death announcement and then like later on uh because it was my little brother's graduation party no graduation from high school so i was at their house just waiting to go off for like the dinner and then i kept checking twitter and then eventually like around four o'clock the news came up and it was basically just a picture of him and his date of birth and you know that day and i was like well expected it to happen and it happened exactly as i expected it huh i mean it didn't surprise me i guess all of that planning so that it wouldn't take me by surprise when he died it worked i wasn't like super sad because i had been expecting it to happen and i was like well was it really worth it (laughs) Was it really worth all of that preparation just to not be, you know, taken off guard? And I was like, no, of course not. This is like textbook anxiety shit. This is why I have all my health problems. Ugh. But basically, I took very great efforts to prepare myself for his death. So when it actually happened, I was, you know, like, well, unlike you guys who were living your lives normally, I had been preparing this for this for a long time now and obviously i'm still sad uh i couldn't even really talk about this without having to stop and like doing many meditations so let's let's go into the questions there's not much more to talk about that question number one i have much of the same issues with stress and anxiety resulting in painful tension in varying areas Face, neck, throat, left side, abdominal. 100% agree on chest pain. It's a nightmare full for anxiety. 
which exasperated all other symptoms. Mine is due to arthritis in my ribs, mainly located in my chest around my heart. Medication and relaxation techniques have helped greatly. See, I was just talking about that. <laughs> Someone else also found solace in that. Uh, my anxiety things have all basically come from my chest pains, but then when I thought about it, I was like, well, I've always been kind of anxious about really stupid shit. This is just a problem I've had for a long time. It just got, you know, really bad when I started having chest pains. I didn't really notice that. I guess I just gotten kind of used to it. Another thing that happened with my... Uh, I have to tell this story because it happened since the last time this I had a Q&A. So, after my birthday on April 29th, when I turned 26, I lost my health insurance because I was just on my mom's plan from her work. And I was like, hey, free health insurance. Health insurance is hella expensive. Of course I'm going to take that. Uh, but I lost it. And then, like, a day later, I had, like, a little numb feeling in one of my toes. And I was like, of course, you know, something like this would happen as soon as I lost health insurance and I can't go to checked out. It's like, but whatever. You know, maybe I, I also did change my diet a little bit. I cut out all carbs and cheese. i have been going crazy on them recently. And I was like, I'm just going to do a straight cut. And then, like, the next day, it kind of got worse and started spreading to my uh, shin. And by the end of the week, it was my entire leg, basically, half my foot, and it even spread to, like, my face. Like, the left side of my face was also kind of numb, and then the left forearm was kind of numb as well. Uh, it was all my left side of the body only. And at this point, I was like, I'm going to have to take a day off to figure out what this problem is. I can't go to the doctor, though, because that's too expensive. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just going to try to figure this out on my own. I was like, what, what have I changed in the past week that might have caused this? Uh, so I took the day off. I went for a whole bunch of walks. I thought, you know, maybe exercise would help. Uh, I also started eating a little bit more carbs because like, you know, maybe I'm going through carb withdrawals, uh, or, you know, less dairy. Maybe I have like a vitamin deficiency. So I tried a whole bunch of things and I actually started feeling better that day. And I was like, oh. One of the things I did that day helped. So the next day, I tried a couple of different things, and all my symptoms just came back. Like, full force. In fact, they were getting a little bit worse. And so for, like, the next week, I kept trying to figure out what I had done on that Friday. And a lot of the things I had read online had shown that some symptoms of vitamin deficiency could cause numbness in parts of your body. Because the only thing is, it could have been bad uh, is if I had a stroke. You know, that's the only thing that would have caused a whole bunch of numbness like that so quickly. And I didn't think that was the case because there was a whole bunch of other symptoms I didn't have as well. Uh, so I thought, you know, probably the vitamin deficiency since I took a bunch of vitamins that day. So I looked up a whole bunch of things it could have been. And at first I thought it was like a magnesium deficiency. So I bought magnesium pills and then I tried uh, calcium and then just a whole bunch of other things. You know, B vitamin deficiency. So now I have a ton of vitamins in my room. And eventually, uh, I just scheduled an appointment with the doctor because nothing was working. And the doctor visit only cost $100 without health insurance, which was way cheaper than I thought it would be. Uh, that was not a problem at all. And I went to the doctor and they did a couple of tests. And after all was said and done, they basically told me that they didn't know what it was, but it definitely wasn't numbness. <laughs> They said, you're not numb. If you were numb, you wouldn't be able to feel anything in those parts of your body. I was like, okay, it's not numbness then. What, you know, what the hell is it then? Uh, it felt like it was numb, but I could still feel, like if I touched those parts of my body, I could feel everything. It was totally fine. Uh, and apparently if you're numb, you can't feel anything when you touch those parts of your body. It's like, you know, that makes sense. Okay, so it's not numbness. I've just been calling it that because that's kind of what it felt like. But it technically isn't numb. It's just a weird feeling in that side of the body. Okay, a weird feeling. What could it be? And like, well, we don't know. If it gets worse, you're going to have to go to the emergency room, you know, and actually go to a real hospital with big equipment and get it tested out. Or we can schedule an appointment with a neurologist to get, uh, you know, to find out what it is because it could be like a nerve thing. And they also said, or 
it could just be another symptom of anxiety. You know, because you said you had anxiety symptoms before with your chest and your throat. And I was like, okay. Well, thanks for that. Um, if it gets worse, I'll just go to the emergency room, I guess, and spend, you know, over $5,000 in those kinds of tests without health insurance. Uh, I am still in the process of looking for health insurance. Because you have like a 60-day window before you have to uh, buy new health insurance before they make you wait. Uh, I'm really close to getting it. I have been working on it. It's just health insurance is complicated. And I'm getting some help with it. So we just have to sign paperwork and stuff. Anyways, health insurance aside, paying the $100 visit, which was not a problem at all, and going home, um, I thought, you know, the doctor wasn't to help at all. In fact, she was, like, very dismissive about it. And then, like, an hour later, my arm felt fine. Perfectly fine. My face, 100% fine. And my foot and leg started feeling a little bit better. And I was like, oh, shh. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. It was anxiety. <laughs> I was like, it was anxiety this whole time. Ah. It can manifest as numbness now. Oh my god, that's so annoying. It turns out, the thing I did on Friday, that one Friday, because I went to doctors a week after that, uh, that had helped, was the fact that I'd taken a day off and that I had gone for a whole bunch of walks. And the vitamins weren't a problem at all. Uh, it turns out, like, the kinds of foods I eat normally are very rich in vitamins. I don't exactly have the worst diet in the world. Uh, I just thought, you know, since I cut carbs and dairy, maybe I was getting a vitamin deficiency from one of those things. Nope. It was another symptom of anxiety. I was like, but the only thing I was having anxiety about was the numbness. Like, what else could it have been? I was like, well, maybe... I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, it started out small, and then I started worrying about it, and then it got bigger. And then as soon as I went to the doctor, and I got back, I started feeling, like, 90% better. It didn't all go away. Uh, and then, so I took, like, the next week off, and I just did a whole bunch of things to try to relax, apparently, since, you know, my body was really stressed out, apparently, even though mentally... The only thing worrying me was the numbness. And I tried this thing where, in order to get out of the house, I just went to random stores and bought stuff. It's like, that would be fun. You know, just go to Walmart and just buy a whole bunch of things I need. Or Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Or go to Target and just buy a bunch of things I need. And some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> I bought a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That was fun. It was fun opening packs and getting random things. Uh, and then, like, a week after that, I started feeling really good. And, like, it's still not gone 100%, but it went, like, 99% away. And even right now, I can still kind of feel it a little bit, that weird feeling in my foot. But, you know, yesterday it wasn't there. Like, two days ago it wasn't there. It just kind of comes back when I think about it. So it's not 100% gone, uh, but it does go away. And then come back, because I am a workaholic and I can't stop working. And I probably should just take a vacation, but I hate vacations. So it's more like, I'm just going to slowly kind of deal with the problem. Instead of take it seriously. That's kind of what I've been doing. Uh, turns out it was just another anxiety symptom. Who'd have thunk it would manifest like that? That was fucking weird. <sighs> Oh man, oh man, if I'm going to keep this under five, an hour, I'm going to have to like speed through these next ones. Uh, what are your top five WoW classes to play? Probably the ones I play the most. I have my Priest, who I play the most, and then I have my Mage, who I play the second most, and that's because I use them for footage. Uh, mages are really good for getting footage, as you can just teleport everywhere. And then after those two, I don't really play anything. But recently, I've been playing my rogue a lot because I wanted to get his mage tower artifacts appearances, which I got. And then I guess my paladins, and I leveled up first, and then my hunter. 
who used to be my main. I used to be a hunter main, and everything I knew was about hunters, and I used to research everything about hunters, and I listened to the Hunting Party podcast, which used to be really good. It still technically goes on today, but it is just... Ugh. It's so sad. It used to be so good with Frost Time on it, and then ever since he stopped playing WoW, I don't want to say anything negative about him, because I used to like it so much. Let's just say there's no longer a charismatic person on there. And it's just not as fun to listen to anymore. But I used to play my Hunter a lot. Also, recently, uh, when they announced like the Fury Warrior changes on the BFA beta, I went on and tried them because they sounded fun, and they were a lot of fun. And I'm actually probably going to be playing a Fury Warrior on beta for a lot, because I... What's a good way to say this? Priests fucking suck at leveling. They are the worst class ever to play if you want to kill low health mobs. They are just so terribly balanced around questing objectives. I hate it. I hate it so much. They are very fun to play in raids and dungeons, but questing is the worst. They kill everything so f- so freaking slowly. <laughs> no curse words. Uh, shadow is the absolute garbage. You have to dot shit up and then slowly kill it because your DPS is balanced around being in that fucking void form. And then you have two healing specs to choose from if you don't want to play Shadow. And they're both healing specs, so they do way less damage than any DPS spec in the game. It is the worst. Uh, testing on BFA right now is basically just questing, because you have to do a ton of questing if you want to hit max level, and then you can test everything else out. And I'm still in the questing part of things, and I just hate questing on my priests. It's the worst. It's not fun at all, because you just kill everything so slowly. Uh, so I tried out the war, and it was a lot more fun, because they don't kill things incredibly fucking slowly, and they actually have AoE abilities, which is another thing. Man, I have so much to complain about of the class I play. I should also, you know, stress the point that they're very fun to play in raids. I cannot play any other healer besides a disc, because I just hate how all the other healers play. They're so boring. I like to heal. I don't like to DPS in raids. Uh, DPSing in raids is super boring because I used to be a hunter main. And I used to DPS a lot and I was a hardcore raider. I used to raid in two hardcore raid teams back to back. Like as soon as the one with my priest ended, that's when my hunter one started. And I would go and read that one. And our raid teams were both the second and fourth most progressed raid teams on the server. Uh, so both of the raid teams I ran were in the top five. Just to give you a good idea of how well they did. And nothing kills your enjoyment of a fight like wiping on it over a hundred times. You know, two times in a row. Like, I'm going to wipe on it a hundred times as my healer. And then I'm going to go in and wipe a hundred times on my hunter. And because I did both of those things back to back in the same raids, I got to know for sure that it is infinitely more enjoyable uh, to attempt to fight a hundred times as a healer than it is to attempt a hundred times as a DPS. Because as a DPS, it's the same thing a hundred times in a row. You're just always doing the same rotation with no changes to it, you know, unless you have procs. In which case, that's still the same, because all you're doing is using procs instead. And it's very consistent. You always, you know, go and do the same mechanic if you have a special little thing to do. There's no variation in it. You're just trying to do the max amount of DPS, and the max amount of DPS is to have your rotation on point, where you know when everything comes up. And it's just so boring. Whereas healing, it's a lot more dynamic. Things change as the fight changes. You know, sometimes the DPS will make a mistake and, you know, dip down really low and you have to use a, a cooldown on them, which you then cannot use on the tank at a certain point of the fight, so you have to prepare for that. Uh, lots of preparing for things. You still have to know the fight, and you have to know when to use big cooldowns, but there's always, you know, little things that go wrong. Why, why did I start talking? Oh, shit, I went on a tangent again, didn't I? Okay. Um, let's go into the next one. Next question. I've been trying my best doing YouTube videos. It's tough to get noticed, but patience is key. Sure is. 
It also helps to keep trying new things. I am planning to make WoW Machinima, but a frame-by-frame -frame picture video type, mainly because I can't remove green screens. Green screens is one of the easiest things to remove, and it's like one of the first things people learn when they're making videos. If you have a real video editor, then you can easily remove green screens. That should not be an obstacle to making machinimas for you. Um, next question. Congrats on five years. Are we ever going to see the fabled Garrosh interactive story? I'm super surprised someone remembered that. <laughs> so, <laughs> a couple years ago, I had the script for another interactive story. And the script for this one takes place uh, in the transition from Mist of Pandaria to Warlords of Draenor, which should show you how long ago I wrote the script. And the thing was basically a guy who uses a mind control technique on Garrosh while he's in prison from far away. That way he could have Garrosh, you like, kill himself. Um... If he was able to mind control him so far away, why didn't he just, like, twist a blood vessel in his brain instead? But that's besides the point, you know, ignoring that little plot hole. What would happen is instead they would swap bodies, and then he would be in Garrosh's body in prison, and Garrosh would be in, like, this mage's body, you know, super far away. And then interactive story would start with choosing which one you want to play through. And if you chose you know, your body inside Garrosh, you have to escape the prison and then hunt down your body so that you can kill him. If you were Garrosh inside the mage's body, you would basically, you know, play it as what would Garrosh do if he escaped prison. And I had the whole thing written out and I had like a whole bunch of different like endings for it. And I thought it was real interesting it's just I never made it because of the amount of time and effort that would go into that. Making interactive videos is so time-consuming, like, the most time-consuming thing you can do. I have three interactive videos on my channel, and I don't even like to talk about one of them because I just think it's straight-up bad, even though I spent a long time on it. But the other two are decent, I think. Uh, the mage who leapt through time and... Also, the rogue inside the dungeon or whatever. Escape the crypts? I forget what it's about. But both of those took an incredibly long time to make, and neither of them did well. So, I just kind of, like, cut the other one out. I'd like to do it. I have, like, the script done for it. <laughs> I have everything planned out for it. I just have no interest in actually making it, because it won't do well. And it will take forever to make. And I've already moved on to other projects that I also want to do that I haven't done yet. Like, I still want to make Dave and DevBot Season 3, even though that series is a complete failure. Like, it just did not do well. And I don't actually really like it that much anymore either. But I still want to end it off. And I have the ending written. I just have to actually do it. But I've been having a whole bunch of medical problems for the past year. So that's on hold. I also wanted to do, like, my... Rescue Rabbit series for my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. And I have that one. It's only four episodes. And I've been working on episode two for six months now. Ugh. I really want to finish that. But it takes so long, too. All of these story-driven things take so long to make. So, the Garrosh interactive story is never going to happen. <laughs> Unless, you know, like ten years from now, I have a team of people working for me. And I was like, hey, you make this happen for me. That's the only way way I can see that happening. Because I also have other Machinima series that I have like completely written out and ready to go. I also have like a guy working on Enzoth Season 2. Um, but he has like creative freedom on that and he's writing the script himself. And the script he's written so far is pretty great. If I told you guys about Enzoth Season 2, I'm trying to keep this under an hour. So just watch my past Q&As. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it. Um, speed. Speed through these. Congrats on five... Oh, I already read that. Hey, Haruma Red X, you sound an awful lot like the Duologues. <laughs> the Duologues is my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel name. Uh, LOL, JK. I know taking advice online for something as serious as this is a bad idea, but I've just finished my foundation year of university, college, 
And I'm not sure if I want to commit to a three-year course or just rent a place and find work. What would you do? If it were me, uh, based on no personal information about you or your situation or your goals in life, you know, go to college. That's probably your best bet. Uh, Because then you can always just find work afterwards. You're going to work for the rest of your life. There's no reason to rush it. But if you don't really have anything you want to do in college, and you just really want to work to support your hobbies or something, I'd still probably say go to college. Uh, Because, I mean, you can always work for the rest of your life anyway. Might as well just get college out of the way. I can't really see too many instances when I would say don't go to college unless you're just, like, really stupid. (laughs) You just can't do it. Uh, Or it would just put a terrible financial burden on you. Uh, or you're in a country where you just can't do that. And you have to, or you're in a situation where you need to work to support, you know, maybe you had a kid at 16 and you need to support them. <clears throat> and even in that case, I'd probably say, find a way to go to college unless, you know, you have something else that works out. Because a college degree is just a really good thing to fall back on. Even though I personally dropped out of college. But that's only because you know, my YouTube channel kind of took off. Uh, and I was only going to college to say I was going to go to college. It was just like a, you know, I don't really know what I want to do. So it might as well go, you know, and I don't really regret that decision. In fact, I'd kind of like to go back to finish it off because I was so close. If someone told me they were able to pay bills because they had a Yu-Gi-Oh channel, I would grant them my eternal respect. Hey, There are a handful of Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTubers who do better than my WoW channel. Uh, they're out there. When will you make a video about priest chakras? Never. I hate priest chakras. I lived through the integration of chakras and all of their changes before they were removed. And I can tell you, nobody liked them. They were always clunky. And I don't want to relive that trauma. There's a reason it was removed. And there's a reason people were very happy when it was removed. You don't usually see that. <laughs> usually when Blizzard removes something, people always, you know, give them shit about it. Uh, there's always some kind of outcry about it. Not for priest chakras, though. That should tell you something about how bad they were. So, how's your average day? What do you like to do besides YouTube? Give us something from the life of here who hasn't been said on previous Q&As. I don't know, I basically live and breathe making videos. When I'm not making videos, though, you know, if I'm just saying, like, nothing related to work, you know, like, not checking stats or doing market research, I like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and Idle Heroes on my phone. It's really fun to just lay down and play those two mobile games while I listen to YouTube videos. Because I love YouTube videos. I watch those all the time. All day. I have... Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Watch Later playlist, very good. You can just press a button on a video and it will put on your Watch Later playlist if you're on your computer. And I basically just try to get through that. And there's also an option to remove videos from your Watch Later playlist that have been watched. Uh, that's probably what makes that little playlist really good. It's real easy to add stuff to it and it's real easy to remove things from it, like on mass that you've already seen. So I'm always just constantly, you know, watching that. And then outside of that, that doesn't have to do with work. I take my dog on a walk. I play a metric shit ton of Hearthstone. (laughs) I am, like, addicted to that game. Uh, At night, I'll sometimes play it. And then at 12 o'clock, every day at 12 o'clock at midnight, I stop work completely. And I also have, like, a rule where I'm not allowed to play video games. Uh, and then for like the next two hours, I'll just read. Usually I read manga. Sometimes I'll watch anime, uh, but 99% of the time it's manga. And recently I've been playing Hearthstone during that time. Like the reason I have the rule of no video games or work before bed is for one, to give myself a stopping point on work. Like a hard stopping point. Like I try to stop earlier on in the game, earlier on in the day, uh, because of my health problems where I should really stop working as much but at 12 o'clock is you know like the absolute no more work at all type thing and also no video games because if I play games before going to bed I'll sometimes dream about them and those are terrible dreams 
It's so annoying playing a video game in your sleep. So reading for like two hours before I go to bed fixes all those problems. And recently I've been having a really hard time stop playing Hearthstone at 12 o'clock. Because <laughs> I'll start playing it like you're maybe like around 10 or 9 o'clock at night. Uh, and then I'll just keep playing it till like 3 in the morning because I can't stop. It's It's an addiction. I really love card games. And I'm just having so much fun building decks and testing them. That's all I do is test new decks I make. If I get a couple of wins in a row, I'll make a new deck and try to get wins with it. I never actually like try to climb ladder or play arena. I just constantly building new decks and trying them out and I can't stop. And I honestly just kind of want to do that now. I don't want to work. I just want to play Hearthstone all day. <laughs> and this is why I don't drink or do drugs. Because I have a hard enough time just to stop playing Hearthstone at 12 and just read instead. Uh, outside of that, I also play games with a friend of mine. Recently, we've been playing a lot of Divinity, uh, but usually we play like Overwatch. Like, I don't like first person shooters at all. Uh, but my friend, she really likes Overwatch. So, you know, that's a thing we can do together. And because of that, I've prestiged in Overwatch already. Like, I've played so much Overwatch. You know, I've gotten to level 100 and I'm going for like level 200 now. Uh, I have hundreds of hours into that game and I don't even like it. <laughs> I'm like an expert on Overwatch now and I don't even really enjoy the game. That was until like Brigitte was added, the new girl who's Torbjorn's like daughter. I love her play style. Like part of the reasons I hate first person shooters is because I hate the first person shooter perspective because I played sports in high school. And the first person perspective always just kind of gives me like, you know, this is an imitation thing. They're trying to simulate what would it be like if you were really out there yourself. And it's like, no, this is nothing like doing actual physical activities with your body because with your body, you have your five other senses and you can like, there's like a invisible magnetic field around your body where you can just feel things in your general facility, facility. Is in it, if it's, I can't say that word. <laughs> you can just feel things around you without actually seeing them, and that part is just absent in video games. Uh, all of that stuff is absent in video games. You can't. Uh, there's just so many things about actually being there and doing it yourself that you just can't simulate in a video game. So the fact that they even attempt to simulate it pisses me off on like a fundamental level because I used to be so big into sports. And it's like, this isn't real first person. It's fake. It's a video game. Stop trying to pretend. I don't get why you're even trying to pretend. Just put it third person. I want to see the character. I don't want to see things from their perspective because it's a fake perspective. It's not real. It's insulting. Oh, and I just hate it so much. It's so, it sounds stupid. Like, even when I try to explain it, it's like, you know... Of course it's fake, it's a video game. But that's just how I feel about it. And I, that's why I hate it. There's probably a better way to describe it. Uh, but it's a feeling, it's not really a logic about it. I hate the feeling of first person games in general. And Brigitte, I don't know how to say her name correctly. Um, she spends a majority of her time in the third person. Basically, if Overwatch gave me an option to play in the third person, I'd like it like a hundred times better. <laughs> I just hate the first person perspective. And the new girl they added, uh, she has like a shield. Whenever you use the shield, it puts you in third person and you use the shield all the time. So it's basically like playing in the third person. So I love it. <laughs> she's my favorite character to play just because she's constantly in the third person. And also like other parts of her toolkit. She's like a jack of all trades uh, where she can heal, she can kind of tank, and she's really good in 1v1 duels. Um, and I've always been a fan of, like, jack-of-all-trade characters. Uh, I also am a fan of healers, you know, as I talked about how my priest is my fun favorite character to play. They're not as fun to play in, like, action-y games like shooters or MOBAs. They're a lot more fun to play in MMOs like WoW. 
but I still kind of like it okay in those kinds of games. So it's fun to be able to heal people and then kind of tank and then she's really good at 1v1 duels. And another thing I really like about it is she doesn't have a gun. Like, I hate shooting things with people, you know, with a gun uh, because I'm really bad at it. Like, that's not, you know, part of the whole first person thing. It's not real and everything. Uh, it's more like I'm just really bad at shooting people with guns in games like that because I hate them so much. So I don't play enough to get good enough to shoot things with guns. And since she doesn't have a gun, she just has like a flail that's really easy to hit people with. Perfect for me. All the characters I play in Overwatch are ones that uh, don't really require aiming too much. Because uh, I suck at aiming. So Brigitte is just like all of the things I like about characters in the third person perspective. So I've just been enjoying Overwatch a lot more now, ever since she was added to the game. And I just kind of wish she was added earlier, so I wouldn't have to have suffered through all of those hundreds of hours of playing first-person perspective, which is the worst. God, I hate first-person games. Also, you know, outside of playing tons and tons of Overwatch, <laughs> uh, I've also been playing a lot of Divinity, and that, that game's fun too. That's, that's a lot more fun game to play with my friend. Uh... But it's super RPG heavy and there's like no hints in it. It kind of reminds me of like WoW uh, in Vanilla WoW's day where you had to like go around and look for quests on your own. And it kind of reminds me why I love the quest trackers. <laughs> it is such a pain in the ass to go around and ask everyone things in order to find out where a quest objective is hidden. Uh, but I like the combat system. I like the tactic stuff in that. Okay, um, next one. That kind of answered the question, what do I do outside of, like, YouTube stuff? Um, nothing much. I play with my friend, and I play a ton of Hearthstone, because I'm addicted. You know, a good way to get me to not like Hearthstone anymore is if I made videos about it. <laughs> nothing kills your enjoyment for a game more than making videos about it. I guess, you know... Hearthstone videos incoming. That way I won't like the game anymore. You should create your own podcast channel, maybe? That's kind of like what my Patreon rewards are. Uh, because I have the Patreon-only podcast that I put up uh, for the $3 reward tier. Where I basically just talk about past videos for the past month. And then I talk about the videos that are upcoming for the next month and also personal stuff. Like I talked about my numbness problem on there before. Uh, since I just made that one two weeks ago, or maybe one week ago. And I was also thinking about doing this new thing, where I just read Wowpedia articles on lore characters. Uh, audio only, no video. That'd be a garbage video to make. But I thought, you know, it could make a nice little podcast type thing, where I just make little comments on it, uh, and read it, and then talk about it. I'm going to try that out. It seems like it might do okay as a Patreon-only like audio thing. Next question. What would you do if your content will not be related with games? Literally, this question says next question, and then it has, you know, the question on it. Uh, what would you do if your content was not related to games? Top 10 stuff. Or jokes. Because I have two other channels that aren't top video game related. One of them is about top 10s, and the other one is about jokes that I animated. Hey, did you ever check out the manga The World God Only Knows? If not, you should really check it out. If anyone ever asks me what my favorite anime is, I always tell them The World God Only Knows. It closes out the story very well. Yeah, I read the manga. Obviously, I've read the manga. Well, I guess I should say, yes, I've read the manga too. Uh, I'm a big fan of it, and I read manga two hours a day every night you know, before I go to bed, so I get a ton of reading done. Uh, if you have time, you should check out the manga Rokudo no Anatachi. I am looking for a new manga right now, so I guess I will check it out. The art style takes some time to get used to, but it's managed to surpass my expectations. I'm hoping this one gets an anime treatment because it's surprisingly well done. I'll check it out. Okay, and that's it. Uh, that's it for the Q&A. If you have any questions for the next one, just leave them down below and I'll probably answer them because I don't get a lot of questions in these videos.